The first unofficial day of CES 2024 has come and gone. And it feels like we've been run over by a giant, metaphorical, 18-wheeler full of press conferences. From home robots to electric vehicles to AI laptops and processors, there was news from pretty much all areas of tech. There were pleasant surprises like Samsung's cute new Bali robot ball and Sony's spatial content creation headset, and intriguing concepts like Razer's vibrating cushion for gamers. We also got exactly what we expected in the form of new processors from the likes of AMD, Intel, and Nvidia, as well as the subsequent flood of laptops carrying the just announced chips for 2024. And for everyone else, this CES also saw the launch of things like headphones, electric vehicles, gaming handhelds, grills, gaming phones, eating tablets, strange hybrid devices, noise suppressing masks, standing desks, and more. It's a free-for-all, and we're nowhere near done. Here's just a small selection of the biggest news out of CES 2024's press day right before the show officially opens. Samsung and Sony's press conferences had some of the best surprises this year. Samsung, like I said, showed us a new version of his Bali robot, which is cute as heck. It's basically a yellow bowling ball with a projector built in and it can send you text messages and video clips of what's at home while you're out. You can ask it to close your curtains or turn on your lights or stream your favorite yoga video to your ceiling while you lie on your back for a meditative session. Samsung told the Washington Post that Bali will be available for sale sometime this year, but it did not say how much it would cost. I guess that's another surprise we can look forward to in the coming months. Meanwhile, Sony brought us a few unexpected demos, starting by driving its Afila concept electric car on stage using a PlayStation controller. Then it showed off its mixed reality headset for quote, spatial content creation, which sounds somewhat similar to Apple's Vision Pro and Microsoft's HoloLens. Sony's does appear to target content creators though, and it looks like a pared down PSVR 2 headset. It'll be powered by a Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2 chipset, sport dual 4K OLED micro displays, and have user and space tracking. The new Sony headset still has no name, no price, but it will be available later this year. Also dominating our news feeds on day one was the barrage of chip news coming from Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. AMD, for example, launched a new Radeon RX 7600 XT GPU, which is a slight upgrade from last year's entry-level model. The company also brought processors with neural processing units for AI acceleration to its desktop offerings by announcing the Ryzen 8000G series. Meanwhile, Nvidia unveiled the RTX 4080 Super, RTX 4070 Ti Super, and RTX 4070 Super, which will cost $999, $799, and $599 respectively. It also announced updates for its GeForce Now cloud gaming service, adding G-Sync support and day passes for streaming. Intel kept things fairly tame and tidy, simply giving us its complete 14th generation CPU family, including HX series chips like a 24-core i9 model. It also launched the Core U Processor Series 1, which is designed to balance performance and power efficiency in thin and light laptops. Now, speaking of laptops, most PC makers followed up the chip news flood by announcing all their models containing the latest silicon. We saw notebooks from Alienware, Lenovo, MSI, Acer, Asus, and Razer, among others. MSI also had a new gaming handheld to show us, which is the first of its categories used Intel's just announced Core Ultra chip. Asus also put that chip in a non-laptop product, debuting a new homegrown nook. Meanwhile, Lenovo continued to challenge our notions of what a laptop is with its ThinkBook Plus Gen 5. It is a weird gadget mermaid of sorts. Its top half is a 14-inch Android tablet, while its bottom half is a Windows keyboard, and all of it is just funky. Speaking of odd Android tablets, TCL was here with a new version of its next paper e-ink-ish tablet. This year's model can switch between a matte e-paper-like display and a full-color LCD at the push of a button. The company also showed off a mini-LED TV, which, at 115 inches large, is the biggest mini-LED TV with quantum dot technology to date. We also got to check out Razer's Project Esther, which is a proof-of-concept vibrating cushion, showcasing the company's new Sensa HD haptics platform for more immersive gaming experience. That might be one of my favorite demos so far because, 
well, it vibrates. It's a vibrating cushion for most office or gaming chairs. There was plenty of car and transportation news too, like Kia's new fleet of modular vans and Volkswagen adding chat GPT powers to its in-car voice assistant. The CES 2024 show floor was also littered with piles of headphones, earbuds, and earwax, thanks to announcements from JBL, Sennheiser, and less known names like Mojawa, which put an AI-powered running coach in its bone-conducting headphones. At the Pepcom showcase, we also saw some intriguing and fun products like the SkyTed Silent Mask that lets you talk in private, in public, as well as the Lifespan Standing Desk Bike that lets you cycle really hard to generate enough power to charge your phone. Intrigued? Head on over to Engadget.com or our YouTube channel for articles and videos with more details on everything I've mentioned and more. We've got plenty more press conferences coming up and the show floor has officially opened now. So that means there's still lots of stuff to check out in the days to come. Make sure you come back to keep up with everything. Or if you prefer, I'll be back tomorrow to recap all of the biggest news again to make your life easier. Thank you, bye.